quick update to wrap up 2023. This year, the engine and trans got put in for the final time. Built the uh, trans tunnel for the T56. Dash got refurbished, but I'm going to redo that dash pad because I'm not happy with it. But it's all in black now. Uh, refurbished two steering wheels. I still have a spare. I uh, started working on the AC vents and stuff, but I have not ordered the vintage air unit yet. I'll be ordering that pretty soon from Summit. I'm playing with the shifter height. I kind of like the old, like, Belvedere Richard Petty height for the uh, shifter, kind of like he was in his NASCARs, but I don't know. I might drop it down a little lower. It depends how it looks when I put the console in. Of course, everything is sound deadened. I have not decided which seats I'm going to use, but I might be refurbishing these... Uh, these Mustang bucket seats and maybe uh, changing their profile a little bit. Haven't decided yet. There are some of the speakers. Ten's going to be in the uh, trunk area right there in front of the spare tire if I can fit it. Might have to offset it. I'm going to have to cut it though. It's too tall. I'm going to have to change the shape of it a little bit. Uh, those six by nines will be up in the package tray. There's two uh, small kickers up there. And then uh, you can't see them. I haven't put them in yet. But two more speakers are going down there in the kick panels. I believe I, uh, they'll be behind. Here's the mount for them. I just hadn't cut the hole yet. They'll be behind a couple uh, panels to cover that up. Used to be vents down there. The Mopars had vents. Speaking of the vents, another thing I did. This typically would have had pull handles to operate those vents. Now it's going to have the momentary push buttons for the Dakota Digital setup which I'm getting ready to slap back in the car and start wiring up, I think. Here's our gauge cluster. All this stuff's already in there. Of course, I'm working on this painless harness and that's kind of where I started losing my motivation. Oh, here's those door uh, panels. I'm also gonna put these on the back side because uh, water can travel down here through the cow. Might be able to show it, I don't know, but it goes all the way down and down through this. And it comes out the bottom here. There's a couple holes here. So that's all hollow and can get a little uh, little bit of damage to the back of the speakers. Oh, we put a red topped Optima because, uh, you know, red, red, red. I have some red accents here and there. And that orange is really close, of course. And I scooted it over. Stock batteries on these were huge. Instead of running fuses, I'm running breakers. Two of them, one's for the, uh, what's this one for? This one's for the painless harness fuse box. This one is for the sound system, for the amplifier. And you can kind of see how I have things going routing. Nothing's hooked up yet. I put a whole bunch of ground straps on this bad boy. I even put a fiberglass uh, car's uh, grounding point there too, just to make sure I had some really good grounds. This is grounded my uh, voltage regulator. I have it grounded obviously to the uh, radiator support, but also ran an auxiliary ground. So it's double grounded. My little fuse panel, one of these is for ignition on, one is for always on. So I have a relay running one of them. That's gonna help out in the future, but I'm already filling a few of them up with radiator fans and such. Cold case came through with this nice uh, Nice unit here. I did have to change the size of this nipple because of these fancy little uh, overflows. And I've been working on them. This one's plumbed into here now. It has just a radiator overflow. But this radiator overflow, I modified. I had to put a hole in it. Oh my goodness, it's so cold it doesn't want to open for me. This thing's tough to open when it's cold. These O-rings seize up. And I broke, my, uh, I broke this knuckle a couple weeks ago teaching one of my martial arts classes. But anyways, it's capped off on the inside. There's a small hole drilled right up and under that cap where you can't see it. You can see my little mess up though, a little scuff uh, to uh, allow the vacuum pressure off. And I went with the pump right here and it routes up through and it does function. It works well. Had to order some tiny, tiny clips to get that to stay on because the uh, diameter was a little bitty bit off and the pressure was kicking it off. Should be good to go now. I'm gonna have to play with it up here to get a good resting place for it. I haven't figured that out yet, but I'll work on it. All of this will be cleaned up, of course. There'll be one huge uh, harness on both sides at some point. So hopefully it won't look so bad rat nest wise, but we're getting there. We're getting closer. The engine side's almost done. EFI side is done. 
uh, except for these wires here, but I'm waiting to make sure I don't have any more that need to go to power before I uh, terminate those. I ran the, uh, when I put the trans in, I went ahead and, you know, took care of the clutch linkage and everything. Uh, this year I also did the brakes. I did all new stainless steel lines all the way down the car. And when I did the front brake conversion, this is a SSBC front disc brake conversion. I left drums in the back, uh, 14 inch drums, I believe. But the uh, SSBC conversion, they, it's a, it's a Mustang caliper. So pretty easy to change these pads through this slide in and out from the top. So that's pretty cool. Uh, hopefully it's a stopping big girl. We'll see. Had a lot of fussing down there on the bottom of the car. I don't think I made any videos, but the, um, the angles were off on these two drag links. And one of them, uh, it was hitting the oil pan. I put a Hemi oil pan in here to get a couple extra quarts of oil in it. So uh, the oil pan was hitting. Wasn't too happy with it, so I had to do some work. And what I ended up doing is I... I don't think we can see it from the top. No, you can't see it. You can't tell. But the steering gearbox, I wedged it. I had to wedge it out. I think. Oh, I can see it with my naked eye, but I don't think I can get my camera to catch the, the wedge back there. Maybe you can see it. Little shiny washer looking thing back there. But I wedged it to drop the angle, and then I changed the angle of the other side to make sure they were uh, parallel and in the same angle but parallel to the ground. Okay, so we put that sway bar on. It's in the original location for the Mopars. At one point in time, I added a tab up there so I could add my own sway bar, but it doesn't interfere with anything, and I just decided to go back to the stock style. So it hangs and goes right there. Not a big deal. What else we do? We start putting some of the front end together because I knew I needed to see where the fenders were gonna be in order to get my wiring to go. The MSD, I made a little, uh, customized this bracket, which was for another component, another electronic component, to hang that up where we can see it. And the Terminator EFI is gonna be way down here. Hopefully I can keep it good and dry down there. We'll see. I might, it, the car will stay clean and it'll be garaged most of the time anyways, when I'm not driving. Made a big panel there. That was a huge screw up because I cut the holes for a stock unit but when i opened the stock unit up everything needed replaced and the cost of it it just made more sense to go with a vintage air so i made that cover and i'm going to go through that cover with a uh, uh one of the uh four outlet bulkheads so two of them will be for the heater hoses and two will be for ac and then i have to do some adapters and i need to get a uh, another condenser that'll work uh, that one's seen better days oh boy here's our super b scoops they're now fury scoops i've customized them they'll fit perfect on my hood now can't wait to see them on there's the car up there on the wall oh boy oh radiator hoses we've got some radiator hoses in from o'reilly's and the hell if they don't fit i might have to trim them down but i'm gonna wait until my fenders are on because the fenders are gonna ro uh, relocate my my radiator support a little bit and I have to get a little space because they're uh, they're awfully damn tight right there. I did some trick stuff inside the car. Here we can see these speakers from the top now. Kicker, all of them are kicker, uh, I won't say they're, they're CS, I can't remember. I think it's kicker CS. They're all the same, same brand, same style. They should jive. I talked to the kicker folks uh, and asked what amp to run and I'm gonna just, uh, I didn't even question them. I'm doing what they said. Let's see, can you see in here? I did make some videos about this. I did a uh, plastic, like an ABS plastic, almost a Kydex um, glove box. Really solid, way thicker than stock. And uh, did not cost me a lot. It cost me some work, of course. And what I decided to do for the seams, uh, focus you, for the seams I did um, a cement. I wonder if I have that cement over here so I can tell you what kind it was. Might, might not. Uh, nope, that seems silver. Here it is. Here it is. I used Loctite PL Max Premium. And it took it a minute to, to settle in, but I mean, I, I taped it up while I was waiting, and it turned out really well. 
Here's another neat thing, because I'm not gonna, I don't smoke, I've never been a smoker. Uh, this, uh, this ashtray, it now opens way wider than it used to. And that is the MSD, I'm sorry, not the MSD, the Holly Terminator EFI control. So that's a little computer screen for the EFI. And I can still run a charger from there if I want to. On my gauge cluster though. So here's, I got kind of uh, tired of sanding fiberglass. So I took a pick, pretty big long break, maybe uh, maybe four or five months. <laughs> it's been a while since I was playing that with that. But this is right above it. And this has one, two, three, four lights that shine in from the top and they show in blue. Well, we're not gonna run that stuff because almost everything I put in this dash is gonna have lights on it. Uh, the radio, the gauge cluster, that kind of stuff. Uh, and if it doesn't, well, I mean, I'm the, it's my car. It's my, this is my first car, green beam, my 68 Plymouth. It's never going anywhere else and I'm gonna know where all the buttons are. So I'm not really worried about illuminating it yet. I could always change my mind, but right here, I'm running a little uh, USB adapter. It's a very thin one so that you can plug the USB straight up into it. Uh, it'll hold two and that's gonna sit to the right side of the radio. It'll sit right about here when you're looking at it in the car. So that's gonna be a neat feature, but also I'm gonna have a charger more than likely in my console that I could just put my phone in the console if I wanna charge it in there. And the body work was done some in 2023, I think. Uh, I did a lot of body work on this car. A whole quarter, the, the before pictures are astonishing. If you go on Carl's Auto on Facebook, you can see pictures of this car before. All of this has been cut out and welded in. Uh, back there on the lower quarters on both sides has been replaced. Uh, there's some there's some uh, shorthand and long long hair uh, fiber filler here and there, and then of course regular filler and some primer. Uh, I jammed it out. This is snakeskin green pearl. I jammed it out uh, this year. I definitely jammed it out this year. I did my very first, I'm kind of new to painting cars. I've done a lot of trucks with like Raptor liner and, and regular paint jobs, but never like a, trying to do a nice car. But there was a big gash somewhere in here. Uh, my daughter dropped the seat when we were trying to put it in one day, gashed the crap out of it right after I fixed it. So I did a touch up and it came out well. I can't tell where the lines are. So I'm pretty excited with that. It gives me confidence. I might be able to do some good touch ups in the future, but basically uh, painting body wise, I'm waiting until I'm done with the harness. And the next thing I'm gonna run in the harness is uh, the stuff in the cluster. Once I have all of that done, I will break this cam in and drive this thing around the yard, do some burnouts, tear up some old tires, get myself motivated to finish the wiring get the body panels hung, finish this dang body work. And my ultimate goal, I'm gonna try my best, is to have it painted this spring when the weather is nice. I'm out here in North Carolina, it gets humid as it can be in the summer. So I gotta find the sweet spot when the temperatures aren't freezing and uh, good, good temperature, you know, low humidity, no rain, all that good stuff. And I will be probably painting in, the, in the here I'll convert uh, this to a booth again because uh, I can't find any booths to rent anywhere near here. So that might be my only option unless I find a booth I can rent or become friends or maybe even go work at a uh, body shop for a little while so I can use theirs. Uh, I'm not sure yet, we'll see. At the moment, I'm thinking about just doing single stage because I really like the, the, the single stage pops well on this. I don't, I'm gonna daily drive it, I'm gonna scratch it. Uh, I'm gonna be abusing her pretty bad. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with that yet. If I don't like the single stage, I can always go add some clear to it. So it's not that big of a deal. Of course, I blacked out most of the front. And once the uh, condenser's on, it'll black out that radiator hole. That's kind of where Green Bean is. Oh, we got some uh, other parts in for it. Stainless exhaust. And I'll show you the mufflers I picked. Now for the stainless exhaust, I'm doing like a hot rod kit. Uh, just just a simple hot rod kit and it comes with your bins and your use and all that fancy stuff um, this is from an old Camaro Firebird something like that I don't know um, also have these these clamps from Summit so two and a half inches all the way back 
I don't think I'm gonna be able to use this. It doesn't bend out enough, but once I get under the car and look, and if I can use that X pipe, I'll X pipe it. Uh, if not, for the sake of being cheap, I'll probably uh, H pipe it. I don't know that. These Flowmasters had pretty good reviews, pretty good sound bites when I looked them up. Here we go. FX series, 71226. So I grabbed two of these. I don't want it to be uh, blistering loud like it was when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I ran this thing straight header and it was, it was obnoxious. It was like a NASCAR. I loved it. Anyways, happy new year. Here's the shop. There's my radiator box. I've been painting uh, Jeep parts on, working on my daughter's Rubicon. She's loving it. Here's the leftover wires. I'm trying to make a little collection here of everything I cut off and don't use. That way I can just see the vast amount of wires I touched in the end. I think that's pretty cool. Um, on uh, the first, tomorrow, I will be 260 days sober. I've been sober most this year, uh, which is new to me. I haven't been sober in many years. I did uh, go sober for a while after one of my tours in Iraq, but of course I went back to drinking and decided to stop. Just cold turkey for no no real reason. And it's been nice. I've lost a lot, a good bit of weight. I've felt healthier. I've been going to the gym more often. And yeah, things are going pretty well. Still a still a ornery old dude, but you know, can't can't work miracles overnight. We're gonna run some Lucas break-in oil. Right now I've got break-in oil in the engine, but it's not break-in oil, it's regular oil with a break-in additive. Uh, it's been in there for a long time. I built that engine like 10 years ago. My, my pictures have been popping up, explaining to me why I need to get off my ass and finish my car. Yeah, I really did. I built that engine 10 years ago, I think, maybe more. And uh, then I set it in the shop. I have gone out and turned it, you know, and. And I oiled up the cylinders and everything. You know, I did the things you're supposed to do to keep it healthy. Uh, it looks fine. I probably will inspect it with the bore scope once just to make sure there's no rust in there. But I'm going to drain that oil and stick that Lucas in there just to be safe. I just want to be safe. I can't wait until this table is empty because that will mean the wiring is done. And I can start working on getting the exterior together. The last thing I'm going to do is the interior. I've been building my interior shop up. I now have uh, a really nice walking foot uh, sewing machine with a servo, and it's easy to control. I'm enjoying it. I hope to get some uh, good use out of it on this car. Uh, it's made it's made sewing so much easier. I cannot stand the clutch. I, my foot's too big. I wear a size 14. My foot's huge, and I have just stupid control of it. I control my foot like a toddler, apparently, because I just cannot work the damn clutch. On these, uh, on these sewing machines. So the servo is gonna, it's awesome. I love it. Uh, there's one fender, another fender. My doors are up there and everything's jammed. This, stuff, this stuff's ready to rock on. It's just gonna get in my way while I'm doing the wiring is the only reason I have it setting everywhere. I'm pretty excited. We're gonna get her done. Hope you guys can uh, follow and see. I know I'm only posting shorts lately because uh, I just, I don't have any uh, video editing capabilities. I'm kind of dumb to it all right now. But I'm working on it, and I might get some longer videos this this uh, year. Probably not on this project, but on the little projects I do along the way, like that Rubicon out there. I guess I could show you my XJ real quick. Here's the XJ. Here's another 68 Plymouth, one of my parts cars. There's another one of my 68 Plymouths, another one of my parts cars. So if you guys have a 68 Plymouth Fury, it's a one year car, but some of the 67 and 68 parts can interchange, but not all of them. So uh, if you need parts, reach out. I probably have them. Uh, this XJ I've been working, uh, not working on, but collecting parts, collecting parts for the XJ. Engine's milkshake, I did do a short on that. Uh, dude told me something about windows not rolling up and them doing some modification under the dash or blah 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 so I'm probably gonna have to chase some wiring gremlins but that window back here is completely busted out so i just picked up two more doors easier my hands are huge i have a 10 inch hand span it is way easier for me to change the door than it is to go inside that door and swap a window out but we'll be working on this at some point but probably uh, a long time from now i love these xj's i built them before i bought this one for 
one reason and one reason only it's a straight drive five speed and it's got the good one in it so i have a uh, you know good five speed bad on it is there's some rust damage i can't remember where right now i don't think it's even on this side but i think a little bit of the rocker is going on one side and the uh floor where a window was down for too long is out but other than that she's in pretty good shape and this thing i'll probably make a little monster out of because i really do enjoy these xj's but i i don't have time to do that because i gotta work on stuff for my daughters they are eligible for driver's ed shortly and I've been teaching them to drive the stick on the Rubicon while they're uh, while we're out here on the four wheel trails, trail riding. But anyway, happy New Year! See you guys this year.